there are two major ways that we can live our life. So I want you to imagine for a moment <clears throat> a pyramid-like structure with stairs on each side. And on each side is a person surrounded by a group of individuals. Now, these two sides represent the two different ways that we can go about living our life. And I'm going to talk about what the implications of that are. So person A, their goal and their one goal is to make it to the top. There may be unconscious needs that they're trying to get met by moving so quickly. This may be something that's just automatically been instilled in them the way that it has most people to just continue to move forward in life despite the aspects of ourselves that may be in resistance. So I want you to imagine that over here on this side of the pyramid, this entire family, because the, the person and all the people that are around this person, we could consider this like the family system. This is the, all the parts that exist in you. And so this person who wants to move really quickly, they're gonna make it to the top faster than this other person, which we'll get to in a second. <clears throat> but in the process of making it all the way to the top, what you're gonna see is basically a trail of parts littered all over the stairs. You know, one way to look at it would be uh, we're getting to the fifth step here and Johnny is causing me problems. Johnny needs to go. Johnny's gonna get left behind, okay? His leg is broken. He's emotionally wounded. He's hungry. We don't have time for this. So aspects are just slowly kind of getting uh, dejected from the group as the weak links, so to speak. And then on this side, we make it all the way to the top and we go, okay, I'm here, I made it. But now I'm alone because I've actually separated from myself just to get here. And my reality is probably going to reflect that loneliness that I feel. <clears throat> and a lot of times what that will lead to is it will cause people to then actually retrace their steps and go back down. They're gonna burn out because they went so fast. They'd at, they didn't actually try to get alignment with themselves they weren't taught how to do that or whatever they were trying to get at the top of that pyramid is more important than these aspects of themselves, but it's always gonna come back around because they're gonna feel lonely making it to the top in that way. So they may have gotten there faster, but now they have to go all the way back down those stairs and recollect each and every one of those parts of themselves. And that's gonna be a process. <laughs> so that's one side. The other side, the one that I'm hoping that all of us will work with more and more is maybe you could consider more of like a turtle medicine in the sense that we're really evaluating what it is that we're moving towards and any of our unconscious motivations for moving towards that and our conscious motivations for moving towards that. And we're also checking in with the whole family. So it's going to take us longer to get there. But the thing is, is that actually you'll get there faster than the other person because it's going to look like they got there. They're going to burn out. Their entire life is going to implode and then they're going to have to start all over again, this time, including the parts of themselves. If you actually take the time to include these parts of you as you're going along, in the long run, you are building a very strong foundation for yourself off of something that's actually in alignment with you, whether that's in your career, in your relationships, any decisions that you're making, the get off of Instagram notification. So any decisions that you're making in your life. Okay. So that's what we can do on this side. And that is a 
that is a path that takes a lot of effort. <laughs> so I can understand why people would not want to take that on. Because that means that every single fucking step that we're going on, we're checking in with every, how, how's it going over here? Oh, okay, this one's hungry. We have to stop. We have to take breaks. We have to make sure everybody's on board before we move to the next step. And if I hit something that's another layer of resistance, I have to stop. I have to work with that before moving forward. So maybe some of you are thinking, well, what does that practically look like? If I want to choose this so I don't have to go through that whole cycle, what would that practically look like for me? Probably starting by checking in with yourself for everything that you're doing, even things that you think you love, really checking in with yourself, noticing what the signs of resistance within your own body are, noticing what type, like what kind of thoughts you might be having, noticing feelings in your body that are pushing away from whatever it is that you're trying to do. And then we want to really deeply understand that part of ourselves. And if we can get it on board, but that's a very delicate process because we're not going into like change these parts of ourselves. Say, okay, you need to get on board because this is what we're doing. But you know, if there's like one aspect of self that's really holding up the whole group, you, you really want to work with that. Usually, once you can clear enough distortions, a lot of the parts realize that like we kind of all have the same common interest. It's just we've been going about it in very different ways. So there's usually some workability there. If you can actually meet the needs of that part, they're usually happy to get on board. Okay, so that's my message for today. I was gonna try to package this up into a reel, but it's just too long. And yeah, I hope this is helpful and be well. <laughs>